I don't care if you have a $20 setup or a $500 setup. There are times when the biggest crappy in your lake's gonna bite and you're not gonna know. So let's fix that. Welcome to Crappy School, classes in session. Welcome to the first episode of Crappy School. It's a new series that I'm gonna start on the channel. And if it does really well, I'll continue doing this. We're gonna start at the bottom of the barrel and we're gonna work our way up learn the basics first and then we're going to go into some more advanced stuff so if you enjoy today's video be sure to leave a comment down below what you would like to learn in crappy school and make sure you hit the thumbs up button for me and subscribe down below so you don't miss a single episode of this so in today's video we're going to be talking about detecting a bite and what i mean by detecting a bite is just that you know detecting a bite is going to put more fish in your boat every year every time you go out on the lake so how do you go about detecting a bite first off we've got to break down you know what's the fundamentals of crappy fishing you know there's a lot of stuff out there you know a lot of good information online there's a lot of good information in old magazines and there's a lot of good information that everybody just kind of knows common knowledge about crappy fishing but what i'm going to tell you now is it gets a, a lot more in depth when the crappy aren't biting as well as you know say a spring bite now in the spring detecting a bite is you know kind of pointless because they thump the crap out of it so that's the first thing we're going to cover. You know, what is a thump? A thump is basically, let me grab a jig real quick. So we take this unreleased swim bait. And what is a thump? The thump that you feel when you're crappy fishing. You got to think, if this is a crappy. You know, normally you see a crappy like this. You know, like their mouth's closed. And they're going to see the jig up here. Now, what they're going to do, they're not sitting here biting it like a dog. You know, they're not up there just tearing it up like a dog would bite something. When a crappy feeds, he flares his gills out like this. You know, his gills goes like that. And they have a, a big mouth. Whether you, you know, if you kind of think about it, you know, when you see a crappy with his nose all the way closed, it doesn't look like he really has a big mouth. But when they open their mouth, the water is actually going to suck your jig in, and that's how they feed. So the crappy comes up, he looks at it, he noses it, and he's going to flare his gills, and the thump that you feel is actually your jig hitting the back of his throat or hitting the, the roof of his mouth, or when he clamps down onto the line after it's engulfed. So that's where the thump comes from. Now those bites are very easy to detect, you know, whether you're holding the line or just using a jigging pole or just vertically fishing like a, a normal fishing way or winding it in. A thump is a very easy bite to detect. So now what's a more complicated bite to detect? Now this is where crappy fishing gets where, you know, skill separates the men from the boys, so to say. Now, before LiveScope and all this other stuff came out, one of my main personal, like, achievements, I guess, what I'm known for is detecting what I, what I like to call it, I can detect when a crappy breeze on my line. And that's pretty much what I'm going to go into detail here. Now, what do I mean when I say a crappy breeze and I can detect it? So, pretty much what I am talking about is bigger crappy say we got a little crappy here and we got a bigger crappy here when the little crappy flares his gills out and eats your bait they're a lot easier to detect because they have a smaller mouth the jig's going to hit it the line's going to hit their mouth but when you have a pound 80 to a two pound class you know even three pounds for you guys up in arkansas and all that when you have a bigger mouth so we've got the jig here and you have a bigger mouth when they engulf it you know if they don't slam down on that line all that changes is the pressure 
of the bite. So you're sitting here jigging. You know, you've got on a brush pile. I'm, I hold my line just like this, guys. If I'm vertically jigging or letting it pendulum back to the boat, I hold my line because what's the... I hold my line like this because what separates you from the fish? Your fishing line. And, and I mean your jig, of course. But your fishing line is the closest thing that directly connects you to the crappie or any fish in general. Even when I'm bass fishing, I, I tend to put my finger on the line because it's going to give you the quickest reaction. It's going to give you the quickest bite. It's going to give you the quickest change in anything that happens. Now, if you get used to it, I can tell what's a brush pile. I can tell when I'm going over a limb. I can tell if I'm going through grass. I can tell anything. And then you feel it. It's a feeling. So, like I said, the bigger crappie are going to engulf your bait. And you're not going to feel it. So, you, you, you've got the line. Hold on, let me tighten this up. So, you've got your line tight. You're sitting there jigging. Crappy comes up, you know, you've got your line tight. He's gonna engulf it. Now either A, you see how the slack got in my line? That's one way to detect it. But B, they will literally come up there, engulf it, and the only thing you feel is pressure. Your line got more heavy than the jig weighs. And that's where experience comes into play also. The more you use your equipment, the more chances you all have to detect what I call a pressure bite. And basically all that means is that the crappy came up, he bit it, but he bit it in a way that you do not feel. And all you feel is that your jig, for some reason, got heavier. That's the best way that I can explain it. Able to detect a pressure bite it comes with time you're not going to go out there and be like oh my jig's heavier you know this is why i like to stick to the same jig sizes i use three jig sizes for every application i have ever fished with crappy fishing i do not go above a 1 16th i stay with a 1 16th on my pole a 132 on my casting and a 164 on my dock shooting or vertically jigging depending if the wind's blowing with the vertically jig and i will go up to a 132 and sometimes they do like the faster fall but that's for a different video now the more you fish with these jigs you figure out what they feel like you know even with a split shot you figure out what they feel like now don't get me wrong we now can watch the fish come up and look at our jigs in real time but those fish are biting and you're not knowing it also if you don't know how to detect a pressure bite so one of the biggest tips i can give you is time on the water getting out there learning what your jig feels like i have been thinking about making a video about going out creating obstacles in your yard and actually being able to detect the brush and everything i just haven't figured out how to make a setup where you could detect a bite at home neither i don't know I, I'm, I'm gonna figure it out so the, the third bite, you know, we covered the thump. The thump, everybody feels the thump. That's the, the number one best feeling in crappy fishing when a big fish thumps the crap out of your line. We covered the pressure bite. That's what separates the men from the boys. I can guarantee you right now there have been hundreds of crappy that bit your pole and you didn't know nothing because they will engulf it and then let go in a matter of milliseconds. Now the third bite is the winding bite. You know, you cast your lure out there, you're winding it back. And what I like to call this bite is a tick. Now they will thump it like crazy on this one also. But if they're biting light, it's more of a tick. Now, the main reason I went out and got this swim bait is for that bite because I want a reaction strike and I'm trying to prove that crappy have a reaction strike but I've yet to do that yet <laughs> but when you're winding your jig 
past the school, a brush, a bridge pylon, you've got to know what a, a brush pile feels like and you've got to know what a tick. You know, if they thump it, set the hook. But there are certain times where it just feels like little, the sound that I'm about to make, that's what it feels. It says, and in your head, you've got to jerk. But normally, you just keep winding. And a lot of times, you do catch them when you keep winding because they'll come up and bite it and tick it. And as you're winding, I mean, the hook's going to go on the top of their mouth and you get one. They're, those are lucky ones. <laughs> but when I say that these crappies can come up here, bite, and let go in a matter of seconds, a largemouth bass can bite a jerk bait with three treble hooks and not get a hook in him. So, needless to say, go out there spend some time on the water feel for these things feel for a pressure bite feel for the thump and feel for that little bitty tick set the hook buy you some jig heads because you're going to set into so many brush piles trying to learn this technique but it's going to be worth it because when you drop down there you feel the top of that brush and you bring it just above that brush pile and it just gets heavy you're going to be flipping a two-pounder in your boat. So I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Crappy School. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button for me. And I'll see you all in the next one.